you for watching the October Headcount Screencast for Districts. All districts must complete this data collection even if your district has zero local facilities for neglected or delinquent students. The purpose of this data collection is to determine which PSUs have local neglected or delinquent institutions so that additional funding may be provided for the next fiscal year to serve students residing in those facilities. To begin, you'll enter your name and your email address, and then you will select your PSU. If you do not see your PSU listed, select the last option, My PSU is not listed. And then for number four, enter in the name of your PSU. If you are a charter or a lab school not seeing your PSU, that is because you complete a different form specific for charters and labs. For number five, you will enter in your organization number. Question six provides the definition of a neglected institution. A neglected institution is a public or private residential facility other than a foster home operated primarily for the child care of children who have been committed or placed in the institution due to abandonment, neglect, or death of their parents or guardians. Think about whether you have an institution within your attendance zone that meets this definition. Please note that in order to be counted, the institution must be residential, meaning students reside, live, and sleep in the facility. Also note that a neglected institution does not include foster homes. Based on the information provided, you will answer whether or not you have a local neglected institution within the boundaries of your PSU. Please note that you should not count neglected institutions located in neighboring districts, even if students residing there attend a school within your PSU. If you answer no, then you will be prompted to this question, which is very similar, but instead focuses on a delinquent institution. A delinquent institution is a public or private residential facility operated for the care of children who have been adjudicated as delinquent or in need of supervision. This category also includes children in local adult correctional institutions. An adult correctional institution is a residential facility in which persons are confined as a result of a conviction for a criminal offense. Think about whether you have an institution within your attendance zone that meets the definition of a delinquent institution. Please note that in order to be counted, the institution again must be residential, meaning that students reside and sleep in the facility. Also note that in order to be counted, students residing in the facility must have been adjudicated. Adjudicated means that a formal decision by the court system was made which requires the student to reside in the delinquent institution. Based on the information, you will answer, do you have a local delinquent institution within the boundaries of your PSU? Do not count delinquent institutions located in neighboring districts, even if students residing there attend a school within your PSU. If the answer is no, you will go to next, and that is the end. And if this is the case for you, you can stop the screencast now. However, if you think that you do in fact have one of these facilities within the boundaries of your PSU, then you will be answering some additional questions. For example, when asked, about whether you have a neglected institution within the boundaries of your PSU. If you were to say yes, then you will have some additional questions you need to answer. For example, 
you will list the name or names of the neglected institution or institutions located within your attendance zone. This is for verification purposes. Next, you will report the number of children, age 5 through 17, who lived in the local institution for neglected children for at least one day during the collection period. The collection period must run for 30 consecutive days with at least one day falling in the month of October 2024. For example, you may choose to run your count from the middle of September to the middle of October, or the middle of October to the middle of November. You could even start your count on Monday, October 31st, as long as at least one day falls in the month of October 2024. Some special notes. Students within a given institution should be counted as either neglected or delinquent. Use the original charter or purpose of the institution to determine whether students are reported as neglected or delinquent. The only time a PSU would report both neglected and delinquent numbers is if there are two or more facilities located within the PSU's attendance zone, each with a different charter. Do I count students who reside in a, negle in a neglected facility that is located in a neighboring district if they attend a school in our PSU? No. It is possible that you may have students who reside in a neglected facility in a neighboring district. In this case, those students would be included in the count of the neighboring district because the facility is housed in their attendance zone. All students within a given facility benefit from services provided from funding. So this student would still receive services. They would just be facilitated by the neighboring county. Do I count students age 5 through 17 living in a neglected facility located within our attendance zone if they attend school in a neighboring district? Yes, the neglected count will generate additional Title I-A funds, or PRC-0050, for next fiscal year, which will need to be set aside to provide Title I-A services to students in the neglected facility even students from neighboring districts who reside there. You will enter your answer here. Then you will come to the question asking about the delinquent institution. If you answer yes, additional questions populate asking you to enter the name or names of the delinquent institution or institutions located within your attendance zone. Next, you will report the number of children, age 5 through 17, who lived in the local delinquent institution for at least one day during the collection period. Again, the collection period must run for 30 consecutive days, with at least one day falling in the month of October 2024. The special notes here are the same as they were above, only this time they're discussing the delinquent institution. You will enter your answer here. Once you click Next, that will be the end of the data collection. If you have any questions about this data collection, please feel free to reach out to me, Laura Pop, or Dr. Nick Anderson, and you can see our email addresses listed here at the top of this form.